So what's it going to cha- take to change, to fundamentally change our political systems? I think fundamental change agents, and one, one of those people is my old friend Marianne Williamson, author, lecturer, activist for social justice. Her personal website is Marianne.com, but she has a new website that you need to know about, particularly if you live in California in the, uh, I don't have the district number. Marianne, which district is that? 33rd. In the 33rd Congressional District. And that is MarianneForCongress.com. Marianne Williamson, welcome back to the program. Oh, thank you so much, Tom. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you and great to have you with us. So you are now running for Congress in, in what is Henry Waxman's district. Yes, I am. Tell us why. I am because I feel what I think a lot of people feel. I know that you feel. I've learned a lot about it from you. There's a real crisis in democracy itself right now. We talk about various issues, whether it has to do with the corruption of our food supply or our environment or mass incarceration or income inequality. But there seems to be this cancer underlying all the other cancers, this underlying issue that has to do with money and politics, which has taken us to a point where a government of the people, by the people, for the people, is already transitioned into a government of a few of the people, by a few of the people, for a few of the people. And I think for myself, as for a lot of people, you get to a point in life where the only things that matter are things that really matter, and these things really matter. This matters to me, and I can't keep my mouth shut, so I'm running for Congress. Yeah. Well, and, and you're running as an independent. Now, California has a unique, uh, essentially a primary kind of system. Open primary. Pardon? An open primary. Right. So tell us about this. Why, why, why the choice to run as an independent, and, and, and how does this work, and what... Do people have to have in mind if they're if they live in the thirty third district right. and and either even if they like Henry Waxman but they still think that Marianne Williamson could do some really serious stuff in Washington D.C. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Well, I am a lifelong Democrat, but I feel at this point um, that the chokehold that the two major political parties have on our public discourse about political issues is extremely unhealthy. I know quite a bit about American history. I know that the presence of third-party candidates um, have been extremely important in terms of the social history, social justice history of the United States, whether it had to do with abolition or women's suffrage or social security or anything else. So the idea that there's this kind of lockout is kind of offensive to me, particularly because the things that I find most disturbing have less to do with the Democrats and Republicans where they're different and more to do with where they are in far too many cases far too similar. So I don't want to be beholden to a party line. I think that the kind of new voice, the kind of new independent spirit of the American people uh, should not have to be filtered uh, through any political party dogma. If I win, I certainly would caucus with the Democrats, but I think that we need a wave of individual candidacies, and I'm proud to be one. You know, Bernie Sanders really demonstrated how to do that. Bernie Sanders, and now there's Angus King. I mean, I think the independent voice, you know, if we can have a few of these in Congress, this will really help our situation. And also, I think that the two parties, in, with their chokehold, help create this kind of lockout of the average American, who yeah. not only does the money keep the average American from being able to run as we should be able to run, but also if somebody's not a Democrat or Republican, it's very difficult. And I don't like that. That's, to me, a very, un-anti, it's a very anti-democratic trend. We're, now, as, go ahead. As you were saying, here in California, we have an open primary, which is a good thing. It means that whoever, in, during the primary on June 3rd, whoever gets the top two amount of votes, whether it was two Republicans, two Democrats, two Independents, or whatever combination thereof, goes to the general election, which is a great thing. It gives me an opportunity, for instance. So this is great. Yeah. That's what California I, has done. I, I think it's marvelous. We're talking with Marianne Williamson, one of the, I think, one of the most significant voices uh, it traditionally been thought of, perhaps, as one of the significant, most significant voices in America for for spirituality and women's rights and things like that. I think, frankly, political voices in America as well. Thank I, you, Tom. I, you, you are, you are, you are at this moment in history, Marianne, one of one of the people who really gets it. And I'm so glad to see you taking this step. And I encourage people to go to Marianne, uh, spelled just like you'd think, M A R I A N N E, for F O R congress.com and and check this out um marianne what are the issues that you see in need of real transformation that you would champion if you were in the u.s house of representatives well i think first and foremost we've got to deal with what i think is the greatest moral challenge of this generation and that is getting the money out of politics particularly since citizens united now with the mccutcheon case that could be coming down the pike we have to deal with the fact that at this point moneyed interests have such undue influence such 
disproportionate influence to the American people. And if this doesn't get healed, then we're always going to be playing defense, whether it's the chemical companies or the, or the oil companies or big ag. We're always going to be playing defense, trying to fight for our rights. It's just not right. If only, you know, if only financial leverage gives you the opportunity to will political power, where, for instance, does this leave our children? Children don't work. They have no financial leverage. And so this makes everybody but the rich essentially a second-class citizen, as you so well know. So I think that that's first and foremost, to do anything I can to contribute to the voices in Congress and also hopefully contribute to an understanding throughout the country that this must be dealt with, both with interim measures as well as with the ultimate eye towards that constitutional amendment that would get the money out of politics. In addition to that, of course, we have the absolute clear and present danger of climate change if this is unaddressed. Of course, the United States should be making massive investments in renewables, clean energy, and so forth. But I think, and I think particularly coming from California, maybe I have even more on this, we have got to deal with the fact that we are corrupting our food supply in this country, that the chemical companies and big ag have literally changed our food supply. And it's not just GMOs. It's all the corn syrup and so forth, so the high fructose corn syrup. So I feel very strongly about the food supply issue. And also, Tom, this moral scourge in our midst, which is the high incarceration rate. We have a higher incarceration rate than any country in the world. We have 2.4 million people in prison. We had 300,000 in prison during the 1970s. 500,000 of those are nonviolent drug offenders. Um, it, this, this, this high incarceration rate, one, an African-American man in, in the country at this point, stands a one in three lifetime probability of incarceration. This is, this is obscene to me. It's morally obscene. Yeah. And I also feel very strongly about preschool. I think that when, you know, I think a lot of people don't know that you know, if an American family can afford it, they send their children to preschool, for the most part. If they can't afford it, they tend not to. But when that happens, what it means is that the, ba the small child who did not go to preschool is already behind on day one of kindergarten. And we have two years to catch up. If we don't catch up that child within two years, the child has been statistically on a 50% probability track to incarceration. If we don't catch them up in their reading within two years after that, there seems to be a direct correlation between how many American children cannot read in the fourth grade and how many prison beds we will be building. Yeah. So those issues are, to me, huge. Uh, a lot of issues having to do with education. I think we should have a serious conversation about free college. You know, Tom, we don't even have uh, environmental safety standards in America's public schools, and we know that there are 40% of our teachers and students who are already adversely affected in their respiratory systems. Wow. So it goes on and on, and, you know, you were so kind with what you said about me before, but, you know, anything I know I learned from you. So oh. we, I know you know better than anybody all these various issues, but I'm sure you'd agree with me. Until we deal with the underlying issue of money and politics, we're turning into, the average American is turning into a kind of economic surf, and it won't get better, I don't think, until the people of the United States, unfettered by party doctrine, say, uh, we're going to change this, we're going to course correct, and we're going to course correct now. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with you, and I, you know, and I've learned so much from you, Marianne. I, going all the way back to, you know, in, in the political context, back when you and I and Dennis Kucinich met here in Washington D.C. on the Department of Peace stuff, back what was that, fifteen years ago or so? Uh, at least fifteen years ago. And and it was like, you know, let's make, let, you know, why is nobody advocating for peace? Why, you know, why are we all talking about war all the time? And 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 it was like one of those forehead slaps. Geez, why didn't I think of that? You know. And, it's so true. And, you know, if you have $800 billion a year that you're spending on ways to wage war, and a tiny fraction of that, tiny fraction of that in terms of the resources uh, that are going towards more enlightened forms of peace building, you know, it's America's dirty little secret. We have a war economy. Yeah. We have to make a conscious effort to transition into a peace economy. Absolutely. Marianne Williamson, uh, I, I, I officially endorse you in this race, Marianne. Count on me. Uh, MarianneForCongress.com. Check it out. Marianne, thanks for being with us. God bless you, darling. Thank you. I wish you the very best. This is the Tom Hartman Program. I don't think I've officially endorsed anybody in a long, long time. But Marianne is spectacular. We'll be back.